Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be painting our guest bedroom. A little bit of redecorating. I would call it a refresh, but since it involves painting, we're going to call it redecorating. Paint a room can be a fun and rewarding project that can transform the look and feel of your home or your space. I'm going to be sharing some basic steps I use to paint this small guest bedroom. But before painting, it is important to prepare the room by removing all the furniture, pictures, and wall decorations. Any furniture you can move. In my case, I'm going to be leaving the bed in place because it's so heavy and hard to break down for just me by myself. And I'm going to be using plastic sheeting when I get ready to roll the paint on the wall. So we're gonna start by uh, patching any cracks or holes with spackling paste and sand them smooth once they are dry. And then we're going to clean the walls with warm soapy water or just a wet towel and depending on the type of paint you use you want to prime the walls and then paint but i'm going to be using the paint with the primer built in and just remember you can always still use the primer primer really ensures that the paint will adhere evenly and cover any stains or marks on the wall so i really recommend using it in the kitchen especially when you have some oil and grease stains and things like that there are so many ways and tricks to trimming out your edges and corners. You can use tape and here I'm using what they call a paint shield. Now I prefer to use the paint shield when I'm doing my baseboards, but I'm just showing you here how you can use it if you're not a pro. I don't like working above my head, so I'm going to do it the old fashioned way, which is freehand. But when you paint freehand, you wanna definitely make sure you have a good angle brush. I promise you can do it if you just try. You just wanna hold your brush at an angle, have enough paint to start, tap the wall, and then you start your painting. And the purpose of tapping the wall is so you can remove a little bit of the excess paint, but have enough to create your line and connect it to the excess paint, if that makes sense. I don't know. But anyway, you want to make sure you do your corners, your trim, and any areas the roller will not fit with a brush. That is very important. And I also like to feather out the last little row of paint. Feathering out that last row of paint makes it where you cannot tell the difference in what was rolled and what was brushed with paint. Now we're going to use this same technique all the way around the room. Of course, we're going to trim out along the doors, especially those corners around any of the electrical outlets and light switches. Of course, we're using the brush. Just an FYI, I do remove my outlet covers as well as my light switch covers. I do not paint those. I do, however, paint my vent cover and I will also paint my internet cover as well as the cable cord cover, but not my outlets and switches. Now the walls are completely trimmed out. I've used the brush on everything that I need to use it on in the space. As you can see, I did not move the bed, kind of moved it off the wall. So it's going to be a little bit hard reaching behind there, but we're going to make it work. Another important thing to remember is to read the instructions on your paint roller. This specific paint roller requires you to rinse your paint roller first to remove any debris and it also helps with the absorption of the paint. So you definitely want to select the roller type for your wall and I went with a smooth surface with the best roller for that particular brand. And here is a glimpse of my angle brush. I cleaned it up already. It just needs to dry and I'm definitely going to clean it after every use. Now the one thing I didn't show was me adding the paint to my paint pan. So I'm going to use a really heavy duty paint pan and I'm just pouring enough paint 
Some people strain their paint, but this is a DIY. I'm going straight from the can to my paint pan. So I'm saturating and rolling the paint in the paint pan before I apply it to the wall. I do have my floor covered. I should have covered this bed, but I didn't. And by the way, the plastic that I'm using on the floor is just an old shower curtain. Of course, I'll use a sheet. I'll even use the paint painter plastic, but in this case, I'm just using some good old, and I do mean old, shower curtain as i mentioned this is a really small bedroom i was not able to break the bed down by myself my husband was at work at the fire department so once again i am happily painting this space by myself and i just pushed the bed back far enough for me to be able to apply two coats evenly around the room and here is the room and here are a few of the items that i'm going to be using in the space as well all right so let's go ahead and make the bed but before i do i just want to share with you all every bed in my home we're going to have a mattress cover some people call it a mattress protector some of the beds are even going to have a mattress pad and a mattress cover and in this case this is a mattress cover with a built-in mattress pad absolutely love it it was gifted to me about a year ago and this is one of the most comfortable beds with a mattress pad and cover and let's go ahead and start by adding the mattress pad and cover along with our fitted sheet and then we're going to do a top sheet a quilt of course plenty of pillows and then we're going to top it off with a comforter and even a throw blanket if you've ever watched me make a bed you know that i enjoy steaming my sheets one of my very first videos involved me steaming the sheet back then i had a very inexpensive steamer. I paid $15 for it. I've also ironed them. So it's one of those personal choices based on your budget or your needs and desires. In my case, I did level up and purchased a steamer from Walmart. I do have a link to it. I'll share it in the description for anyone who's interested. But steaming your sheets, even fresh out of the dryer, they're going to give this bed a whole nother look. And keep in mind, we're going to make this bed as if there's no one sleeping in it. Now, it is a guest bedroom, but I am decorating it because this is one of those rooms that you see when you enter my home or even go to the guest bath. Keep in mind, this is a guest bedroom. I don't expect for my guests to make up this bed the way I'm going to if they were to spend the night. But this is one of two guest bedrooms that we have in our home. And most of the times when we have overnight guests, they're going to want to sleep in the room that is upstairs. And like I said, even if they did sleep in this one, I don't expect for them to do some of the things that I'm going to do in this space. I just want this room to stay put together when there's no one here or no one sleeping in it. Because this is that room that a lot of my guests come over when they have to just use the restroom. They will see this space. If they enter my home from the garage, they will see this space. I'm going to see the space every day when I come home from work and enter from the garage. So I want it to look good and have a nice area when there's no one sleeping in it. So we went ahead and steamed the sheets. We applied our, our fitted sheet, top sheet, and now we're adding our blanket or quilt. Some people like to use both. And they're also sometimes referred to as coverlets. And I'm completely tucking this coverlet and doing somewhat of an envelope fold towards the end of the bed. And then I'm going to fold back the top part of the bed. And here is how it looks folded back. Now I'm going to add some of the pillows to the bed. We're going to add a set that came with the coverlet. Then we're going to add some decorative pillows. The decorative pillows are 24 inches. And then we're adding this 
do they cover and insert? I want you to make a mental note of how I place the duvet cover on the bed. I placed it there so when I add the comforter to the bed, the comforter will tuck in between the mattress and the footboard. It's going to create more of a luxe look. The purpose of me adding this duvet is to give this comforter more volume. I prefer to use duvets because I control the thickness of my comforter or my bedding. This comforter is really thin and it has more of a pillow, a uh, pillow-like insert, but it's not giving the fullness that I know I need for this bed. So that is why I opted to add the duvet covering add some more decorative pillows so we have some 24 inch 22 inch and we can add a couple of more 18 maybe in the front or even a lumbar pillow so now we're going to add our decorative curtains and we already have some that i pull from another room they're just a creamy off white and have you all guessed what color paint i've added to this wall do you have a clue of what color? Have you seen this color before? And this is how the bed is looking. Now, I wanted to show you how the comforter is stopping right where the duvet is. So I tighten it up a little bit more and this is, you can see really good where my fold stops and starts, just so you can see how everything is laying. And I did leave a little space between the comforter and the bed spread. I went ahead and tucked this side. I wanted to let you see how it looked untucked, just laid over, which is fine. But I wanted a really good tuck, so I'm going to come back and tuck that area. And notice how I did my fold right at the end. I did it the same way I did my coverlet and I'm going to tuck it really good. And then I'll come back and give this comforter a good steaming because it really needed it. The wrinkles are very thick. So once all of that is done, we'll finish decorating the space and you'll have a final look of the space. I went ahead and added the lamps, of course. Also moved the chest as well as a chair and the bench, but you don't see it's over. On the other side, I moved it all back into the space. And by the way, were you able to uh, identify what color paint this is on the wall? It's Sherwin-Williams accessible beige and it's the duration paint line in the matte finish i love a matte finish i like the way the flat looks but it's not durable the matte finish is a washable paint if you like the look of a flat paint so yeah we use the duration brand of sherwin williams all right, here is a view of the space with the light turned off, just a real warm look. And this comforter is made by Vera Wang. Of course, I love Vera Wang comforters because they are oversized and of course they fit this really deep, big mattress. I do have some more pieces I'm going to add to this space. I did purchase some new art as well, and I'll share that in another video. All right, everyone, we are coming to the end of this video. Thank you all for watching my videos. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't already subscribed and you like these types of videos, please hit the subscribe button. Turn your notification on so you'll be notified when I post videos. And feel free to like, share, and comment. It really does help my channel. Thanks again. Again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.